Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever I'm dropping content on the channel. And now onto the topic of this video and we are three weeks and two days into SX12 Eden Conquer. I wanted to give you a mid-season update kind of to show you where, where I am uh, with my progress, how the map's going, the new elements in terms of merit scoring system, faction missions, all of that stuff. So let's get straight into it. General kind of review of the season so far and the map. I have to say the kind of whole ethos of this map appears to be that it's a linear structure which kind of is staggered so that you don't get a finalized result for the season really quickly. That's my kind of current opinion on it. I actually really, I have enjoyed this season a lot more than previous seasons so far. It, of course, it always depends on the map and your circumstances, but I feel that this kind of format is designed to make sure that you don't end up with maps being decided on day one or day two, or you know, you end up halfway through the season with nothing to play for. Um, so it, I think it's it's a good format. I, from what I've been hearing, a lot of the maps, the matchups are pretty good. Uh, you can see on the right hand side of the screen what the current merit scores are on our map. I am part of Tankyard Empire, uh, so we have the highest merit score right now. But please bear in mind, you know, if if you take that um, ancient temple and you ha you're holding it at uh, tally, that's worth 500 million merit so everything can change just depending on the temple which you won't have access to later in the season now just looking at the map you can see that a lot of different guilds have taken structures and after those kind of initial few days of being in your section of the map which is outlined by the colors here in each corner or each faction starts in a corner you go into these kind of central areas no man's land areas i'll be honest with you for probably what a week we were just in stalemate in this middle section against um, our opponents from this faction and I guess it was you have to be careful in terms of not using up too much of your resources at this stage because mo as you can see in this section there aren't any temples to obtain uh, it's there's a there's a few strongholds um, and there's mainly some towns but nothing that is really going to define your season. So I would say if you're kind of, when you're in this kind of middle ground, um, if, if possible, try and be sensible with your troops, try and extend that season as long as possible. Um, you're probably not going to win or lose just by taking these kind of nomad areas. And of course as well, with this season, you cannot enter your enemy faction areas. So these are always kind of safeguarded and then it's depending on how you work together as a faction, can you, uh, collaborate together and um, be able to kind of you know divvy up who gets your capital who gets the towns uh, work out your rankings merge all your players together um, I have to say in Tankyard the leaders group have done it which I'm not part of but um, I've taken a, I'm trying to take a step back in terms of that kind of stuff but um, everyone has done a great job so far collaborating together and building like three or four large guilds that are working proactively towards our common goal of winning the map so once you've um, got through kind of that week of working or fight or kind of standoffs in this zone, then you start to get access into this inner zone again, where there's some more towns and strongholds for you to take. Um, but then what's really key, and the last few days we've seen this action, is once these gates for the inner circle here, for this outer, um, for the outer capitals, but in the inner structure of the map, these are kind of key moments because you have to race you have to have your tiling team set up at reset and because you have to move inside from this gate um, all the way in to these gates and then it's basically a straight race and you can obviously have two fronts in our instance we haven't been fighting for this capital down here we've only been working fighting on one front and it was a race to get into this zone through this gate at the top and then down into the capital so this whole kind of zone, it really is just down to those kind of couple of hours. And if you can actually, um, first off, get to this gate first and then come down and start obviously controlling this zone around the capital. But also, obviously, if you were much quicker, you could potentially take this gate as well and block out your opposing faction straight away, which would give you a massive advantage. So strategically, 
you need to kind of plan to have your key tilers on at these core moments at research reset um, on these specific days and that's where we're at after three days and two weeks and then um, you'll see that obviously there's this other further inner ring ringed zone which has got um, checkpoint sevens on it and currently we're still waiting uh, for another four days until these are going to be available which will be on the Sunday of this third week so once you can get into checkpoint seven this will give you access to this inner zone and then you're going to be wanting to go towards these level seven capitals of course capitals are really valuable in this format of Eden of course they usually are anyway um, but obtaining a capital you're going to be gaining additional merits for each guild member of that um, guild that is in control of the capital and as you can see it's going to be increased by 3800 an hour once you get beyond that you've then got the world center zone which is the level eight gates you can see that we've still got a couple of weeks before um, that's going to be action actions it's 13 days left to go um, so you'll have access on reset of the tuesday of the fifth week and then the world center is available a couple of days after that so you're looking at thurs reset thursday on the fifth week um, to get into uh well on that fifth week it's going to be absolutely key if you can obtain this zone because on this inner zone there's only two access points so you can see here and here for this inner ring so only two factions can get into this central zone anyway and then obviously you know i would expect then they're going to control those gates potentially and you know maybe switch them to bring in other guilds in from their same faction if they can and as i've already mentioned 500 million extra merits for the occupying guild at tally from the world center so that is going to be absolutely key and there's still a high possibility of having you know battles into week six for trying to get control of the temple so i really do enjoy that element of the of this kind of Eden Conquer format. Now, talking about the merit scoring system, um, some people I know are a little bit hesitant about it. You can already see from the scores, we're talking about hundreds of millions already. And then you've got your individual guild meta, like we're, we're ranked sixth, um, FUA are bossing it at the moment um dlr are basically our main competitors that we've been up against and then gta are also a bit of a force and ats as well so we're ticking along nicely we're ranked second in our faction personal merit as well um shout out to yazi who's got 23 million merit i am languishing in 387th on the map um my tech is just not good enough but the kind of key thing that people have been talking about is when you're having these battles against individuals you're going to win or lose merit against each individual legion that you face so in this battle i uh, won 131,000 merit from soul king and dlr now i won so much because you're winning a proportion of your opponent's um merit so if you do win uh, one big victory against like a, someone who's got millions of merit then you're going to get a chunk of merit from them but if they win off you and you've only got like me i've only got a million merit say they're hardly going to actually win anything so there is a risk reward element to that and then if you go into the individual battle reports you see this first legion i won sixty seven thousand, and then the second one i won sixty three thousand. obviously it's going to be slightly less because i already took some from from his merit total the previous time so um that's why you're going to see uh, differences in how much merit you gain or lose from battles and um, obviously it, you need to be really kind of thinking about your strategy if you start hitting a tile that a reinforced tile that's like 200 kilometers from you and you've got a massive um, debuff on your wheel then you're just going to be losing your merit and ultimately you're shifting that merit from your your faction to the opposing faction so you need to really play smart in how you kind of uh, approach that during this season 
So merit scoring. And then on to faction missions. Obviously, faction missions was a new event brought in for this season as well. Uh, a lot of people were wondering about that. I've already covered the mechanics of it. I just wanted to kind of give an update because obviously first we've got faction files. A lot of people were wondering how difficult it would be to obtain the files and you get one or two every time you do a mission. Um, you know, three weeks in, I've actually already got 56 files. I know a lot of players have already finished this uh, and obtained their X12 Legendary Recruitment Selection card. Um, so that could be a good option potentially to be strengthening your hero lineup um, in the middle of the season. And it's, you know, I wouldn't focus on the number of faction files available in a mission. That's not really important. You're going to have plenty of time to be able to obtain all of the faction files you need. What you want to be focusing on is the star rating. Obviously, it goes up to five, and which will give you a thousand merit. And then, obviously, you've got this bonus structure in terms of putting the right heroes in that I've talked about as well. Um, again, in terms of progression, I did say that I'd be focusing on Tankyard Empire, uh, the heroes in this faction, because it's got Beast Queen, Rose, and Immortal in it. And um, I'm already up to level 14. Uh, I'm just working on these last, what, 17, 16 and a half thousand, say. Um, amiability to finish this uh, faction's missions and then I'll have them all maxed out at level 15 and I'll get that extra 20 combat speed. Other three are ticking along nicely. As I say, I haven't really been focusing on these as much, but I'm around level 9 or 10 for these and um, you know, I would expect that I should be able to, f you should be able to actually max all four um, well within the last couple of weeks of the season. That's, that would be my expectation. So those are all the kind of new formats of this season. Just in terms of my personal progression, um, I'm ranked top 60 in the guild. Um, you know, I'm playing as, getting online as much as I can, contributing as much as I can. I'm ranked in the top 40 for taking enemy tiles. I haven't been focusing so much on my loyalty. I'm only on 7,000 loyalty, which even though that's top 30 in the guild, usually, as you've seen from previous seasons, I'm usually in the top four or five for loyalty, um, but I'm not, pushing it so much in terms of my tiles and everything I've been more focusing on uh, trying to work for the team because again with this faction system uh, you know it's all at the end of the day getting to level 16 there's plenty of people that can do that the, the kind of holding territory taking your structures is even more important in this linear format in my opinion and specialization I did uh, upgrade to level 130 finally uh, which is nice and I'm very close to getting up to 131 97 and a half million honor points required at this stage guys um, I haven't been putting on to red yet either I've still been focusing on what I usually do on green and, and blue banners um, and gaining my honor that way if it gets really pinch point where I'm not winning any battles then I would have to switch on to red I mean if I did switch on to red then I'd be winning more and have more merit I guess so there will be a time coming for that and that is everything really I wanted to talk about um, in this video also I did manage to get a um, Valentine's Day castle skin the champagne castle skin um, this morning as well because the devs gave out the, the five yellow diamonds and um, I only needed a few more so I did spend five dollars on on that pack to get an extra three diamonds and that got me enough to um, get a skin so I finally got a uh, premium skin on my castle as well after three years of playing the game woohoo um of course i'd be interested to hear those of you that are playing in these you know states one to 180 whatever who are playing this format i'd really be interested to hear your comments and feedback and um, maybe i've missed something in terms of the structure of course anything you can add in chuck it in the comment section down below are you uh in currently playing in uh, wonders and you're uh you know got questions about this format of course, pop it in the comment section down below. And if you could please share this video and my channel in your Alliance chat, province chat, map chats, and through line, WhatsApp, Viber, Discord, whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.